Decolonization American English, or decolonization British English, is the undoing of colonialism, the latter being the process whereby a nation establishes and maintains its domination on overseas territories. The concept particularly applies to the dismantlement, during the second half of the 20th century, of the colonial empires established prior to World War I throughout the world. Scholars focus especially on the movements in the colonies demanding independence, such as Creole nationalism. The United Nations Special Committee on Decolonization has stated that in the process of decolonization, there is no alternative to the colonizer but to allow a process of self determination, but in practice, decolonization may involve either non violent revolution or national liberation wars by pro independence groups. It may be intramural or involve the intervention of foreign powers acting individually or through international bodies such as the United Nations. Although examples of decolonization can be found as early as the writings of Thucydides, there have been several particularly active periods of decolonization in modern times. These include the breakup of the Spanish Empire in the 19th century, of the German, Austro-Hungarian, Ottoman, and Russian empires following World War I, of the British, French, Dutch, Japanese, Portuguese, Belgian and Italian colonial empires following World War II, and of the Soviet Union, successor to the Russian Empire, at the end of the Cold War in 1991. Decolonization has been used to refer to the intellectual decolonization from the colonizers' ideas that made the colonized feel inferior. Topic. Methods and stages Decolonization is a political process. In extreme circumstances, there is a war of independence. More often, there is a dynamic cycle where negotiations fail, minor disturbances ensue resulting in suppression by the police and military forces, escalating into more violent revolts that lead to further negotiations until independence is granted. In rare cases, the actions of the pro-independence movements are characterized by non-violence, with the Indian independence movement led by Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi being one of the most notable examples, and the violence comes as active suppression from the occupying forces or as political opposition from forces representing minority local communities who feel threatened by the prospect of independence. For example, there was a war of independence in French Indochina, while in some countries in French West Africa excluding the Maghreb countries decolonization resulted from a combination of insurrection and negotiation. The process is only complete when the de facto government of the newly independent country is recognized as the de jure sovereign state by the community of nations. Independence is often difficult to achieve without the encouragement and practical support from one or more external parties. The motives for giving such aid are varied. Nations of the same ethnic and or religious stock may sympathize with the people of the country, or a strong nation may attempt to destabilize a colony as a tactical move to weaken a rival or enemy colonizing power or to create space for its own sphere of influence. Examples of this include British support of the Haitian Revolution against France, and the Monroe Doctrine of 1823, in which the United States warned the European powers not to interfere in the affairs of the newly independent states of the Western Hemisphere. As world opinion became more pro-independence following World War I, there was an institutionalized collective effort to advance the cause of decolonization through the League of Nations. Under Article 22 of the Covenant of the League of Nations, a number of mandates were created. The expressed intention was to prepare these countries for self-government, but the mandates are often interpreted as a mere redistribution of control over the former colonies of the defeated powers, mainly the German Empire and the Ottoman Empire. 
This reassignment work continued through the United Nations, with a similar system of trust territories created to adjust control over both former colonies and mandated territories. In referendums, some dependent territories have chosen to retain their dependent status, such as Gibraltar and French Guiana. There are even examples, such as the Falklands War, in which a geopolitical power goes to war to defend the right of a dependent territory to continue to be such. Colonial powers have sometimes promoted decolonization in order to shed the financial, military and other burdens that tend to grow in those colonies where the colonial governments have become more benign. Decolonization is rarely achieved through a single historical act, but rather progresses through one or more stages of decolonization, each of which can be offered or fought for. These can include the introduction of elected representatives, advisory or voting, minority or majority or even exclusive, degrees of autonomy or self-rule. Thus, the final phase of decolonization may, in fact, concern little more than handing over responsibility for foreign relations and security, and soliciting de jure recognition for the new sovereignty. But, even following the recognition of statehood, a degree of continuity can be maintained through bilateral treaties between now equal governments involving practicalities such as military training, mutual protection pacts, or even a garrison and or military bases. History Beginning with the emergence of the United States in the 1770s, decolonization took place in the context of Atlantic history, against the background of the American and French revolutions. Decolonization became a popular movement in many colonies in the 20th century, and a reality after 1945. The historian William Hardy McNeil, in his famous 1963 book The Rise of the West, appears to have interpreted the post 1945 decline of European empires as paradoxically being due to westernization itself, writing that, Although European empires have decayed since 1945, and the separate nation-states of Europe have been eclipsed as centers of political power by the melding of peoples and nations occurring under the aegis of both the American and Russian governments, it remains true that, since the end of World War II, the scramble to imitate an appropriate science, technology, and other aspects of Western culture has accelerated enormously all around the world. Thus the dethronement of Western Europe from its brief mastery of the globe coincided with, and was caused by, an unprecedented, rapid westernization of all the peoples of the earth. In the same book, McNeil wrote that, The rise of the West, as intended by the title and meaning of this book, is only accelerated when one or another Asian or African people throws off European administration by making Western techniques, attitudes, and ideas sufficiently their own to permit them to do so. Topic. American Revolution Great Britain's 13 North American colonies were the first to break from the British Empire in 1776, and were recognized as an independent nation by France in 1778 and Britain in 1783. The United States of America was the first set of European established colonies to achieve independence and establish itself as a nation, and was the first independent settler state in the Americas. Topic. Haitian Revolution The Haitian Revolution was a slave uprising that began in 1791 in the French colony of Saint-Domingue, on the Caribbean island of Hispaniola. In 1804, Haiti secured independence from France as the Empire of Haiti, which later became a republic. Topic. 
Topic: Spanish America. The chaos of the Napoleonic Wars in Europe cut the direct links between Spain and its American colonies, allowing for process of decolonization to begin. With the invasion of Spain by Napoleon in 1806, the American colonies declared autonomy and loyalty to King Ferdinand VII. The contract was broken and the regions of the Spanish Empire had to decide whether to show allegiance to the Junta of Cadiz, the only territory in Spain free from Napoleon, or have a Junta assembly of its own. The economic monopoly of the metropolis was the main reason why many countries decided to become independent from Spain. In 1809, the independence wars of Latin America began with a revolt in La Paz, Bolivia. In 1807 and 1808, the vice royalty of the River Plate was invaded by the British. After their second defeat, a Frenchman called Santiago de Liniers was proclaimed new viceroy by the local population and later accepted by Spain. In May 1810 in Buenos Aires, a junta was created, but in Montevideo it was not recognized by the local government who followed the authority of the junta of Cadiz. The rivalry between the two cities was the main reason for the distrust between them. During the next 15 years, the Spanish and Royalist on one side, and the rebels on the other fought in South America and Mexico. Numerous countries declared their independence. In 1824, the Spanish forces were defeated in the Battle of Ayacucho. The mainland was free, and in 1898, Spain lost Cuba and Puerto Rico in the Spanish-American War. Puerto Rico became a colony of the U.S., but Cuba became independent in 1902. Topic. Ottoman Empire Cyprus Cyprus was invaded and taken over by the Ottoman Empire in 1570. It was later relinquished by the Ottomans in 1878. The Cypriots expressed their true disdain for Ottoman rule through revolts and nationalist movements. The Ottomans only suppressed these revolts in the harshest of fashion but that only ended up fueling the revolts and desire for independence. The Cypriots desired to merge with Greece because they felt a close connection with Greece. They were tired of three centuries of Turkic rule and openly expressed their desire for enosis. The Cypriots would embrace Greek culture and traditions. They abandoned Ottoman architecture and showed little respect for Ottoman rule. All these acts of defiance could be attributed to decolonization. When the Cypriots made acts of nationalism, they were participating in a form of decolonization because they were attempting to remove all trace of Turkic and Muslim influence within their society. The Greek War of Independence had major effects on Cyprus and after the Ottomans had left, Cyprus continued to create a Greek culture they wished to be a part of. Cyprus would continue to create this imagined identity of Greek culture. This can also be a form of imagined human geography because Cyprus used this identity to justify its revolts and nationalist movements. A number of people, mainly Christians in the Balkans, previously conquered by the Ottoman Empire were able to achieve independence in the 19th century, a process that peaked at the time of the Ottoman defeat in the Russo-Turkish War of 1877-78. The Ottoman Empire had failed to raise revenue and a monopoly of effective armed forces. This may have caused the fall of the Ottoman Empire. Topic. Egypt In the wake of the 1798 French invasion of Egypt and its subsequent expulsion in 1801, the commander of an Albanian regiment, Muhammad Ali, was able to gain control of Egypt. 
Although he was acknowledged by the Sultan in Constantinople in 1805 as his pasha, Muhammad Ali, and eventually his successors, were de facto monarchs of a largely independent state managing its own foreign relations. However, despite this de facto independence, Egypt did remain nominally a vassal state of the Ottoman Empire obliged to pay a hefty annual tribute to the Sultan. Throughout the long 19th century, Muhammad Ali would send scores of Azhar scholars to France and other European countries to be educated in the empirical sciences, due to the heavy inferiority complex ingrained from French defeat. However, such scholars would unwittingly participate in their country's intellectual colonization throughout this century and establish the national public educational system on secular humanist enlightenment philosophy and principles and Western culture in general to this day. Upon declaring war on Turkey in November 1914, Britain unilaterally declared the Sultan's rights and title over Egypt abolished and proclaimed its own protectorate over the country. Topic. Greece the Greek War of Independence 1821 was fought to liberate Greece from a three centuries long Ottoman occupation. Independence was secured by the intervention of the British and French navies and the French and Russian armies, but Greece was limited to an area including perhaps only one third of ethnic Greeks, that later grew significantly with the Megali Idea project. The war ended many of the privileges of the Phanariot Greeks of Constantinople. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Bulgaria. Following a failed Bulgarian revolt in 1876, the subsequent Russo-Turkish war ended with the Provisional Treaty of San Stefano established a huge new realm of Bulgaria including most of Macedonia and Thrace. The final 1878 Treaty of Berlin allowed the other great powers to limit the size of the new Russian client state and even briefly divided this rump state in two, Bulgaria and Eastern Rumelia, but the irredentist claims from the first treaty would direct Bulgarian claims through the First and Second Balkan Wars and both world wars. Topic. Romania. Romania fought on the Russian side in the Russo-Turkish War and in the 1878 Treaty of Berlin, Romania was recognized as an independent state by the Great Powers. Serbia Centuries of armed and unarmed struggle ended with the recognition of Serbian independence from the Ottoman Empire at the Congress of Berlin in 1878. <inaudible> Montenegro The independence of the Principality of Montenegro from the Ottoman Empire was recognized at the Congress of Berlin in 1878. However, the Montenegrin nation has been de facto independent since 1711, officially accepted by the Tsardom of Russia by the order of Tsar Petr I. Alexeyevich Romanov. In the period 1795-1798, Montenegro once again claimed independence after the Battle of Kruzy. In 1806, it was recognized as a power fighting against Napoleon, meaning that it had a fully mobilized and supplied army by Russia, through Admiral Dmitry Senyavin at the Bay of Kotor. In the period of reign of Peter II Petrovich in Jegos, Montenegro was again colonized by Turkey, but that changed with the coming of Nyaz Danilo I, with a totally successful war against Turkey in the late 1850s ending with a decisive victory of the Montenegrin army under Grand Duke Mirko Petrovich in Jegos, brother of Danilo I, at the Battle of Grahovac. 
The full independence was given to Montenegro after almost 170 years of fighting the Turks, Bosniaks, Albanians and the French 1806 to 1814 at the Congress of Berlin. Topic: <laughs> British Empire The emergence of indigenous bourgeois elites was especially characteristic of the British Empire, which seemed less capable or less ruthless in controlling political nationalism. Driven by pragmatic demands of budgets and manpower the British made deals with the nationalist elites. Across the empire, the general protocol was to convene a constitutional conference in London to discuss the transition to greater self-government and then independence, submit a report of the constitutional conference to Parliament, if approved submit a bill to Parliament at Westminster to terminate the responsibility of the United Kingdom with a copy of the new constitution annexed, and finally, if approved, issuance of an order of council fixing the exact date of independence. After World War I, several former German and Ottoman territories in the Middle East, Africa, and the Pacific were governed by the UK as League of Nations mandates. Some were administered directly by the UK, and others by British Dominions, Nauru and the Territory of New Guinea by Australia, South West Africa by the Union of South Africa, and Western Samoa by New Zealand. Egypt became independent in 1922, although the UK retained security prerogatives, control of the Suez Canal, and effective control of the Anglo-Egyptian Sudan. The Balfour Declaration of 1926 declared the British Empire dominions as equals, and the 1931 Statute of Westminster established full legislative independence for them. The equal dominions were six Canada, Newfoundland, Australia, the Irish Free State, New Zealand, and the Union of South Africa. However, some of the dominions were already independent de facto, and even de jure and recognized as such by the international community. Thus, Canada was a founding member of the League of Nations in 1919 and served on the Council from 1927 to 1930. That country also negotiated on its own and signed bilateral and multilateral treaties and conventions from the early 1900s onward. Newfoundland ceded self-rule back to London in 1934. Iraq, a League of Nations mandate, became independent in 1932. In response to a growing Indian independence movement, the UK made successive reforms to the British Raj, culminating in the Government of India Act 1935. These reforms included creating elected legislative councils in some of the provinces of British India. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, India's independence movement leader, led a peaceful resistance to the British rule. By becoming a symbol of both peace and opposition to British imperialism, many Indians began to view the British as the cause of India's problems leading to a newfound sense of nationalism among its population. With this new wave of Indian nationalism, Gandhi was eventually able to garner the support needed to push back the British and create an independent India in 1947. Africa was only fully drawn into the colonial system at the end of the 19th century. In the northeast, the continued independence of the Empire of Ethiopia remained a beacon of hope to pro independence activists. However, with the anti-colonial wars of the 1900s decade barely over, new modernizing forms of African nationalism began to gain strength in the early 20th century with the emergence of Pan-Africanism, as advocated by the Jamaican journalist Marcus Garvey (1887–1940), whose widely distributed newspapers demanded swift abolition of European imperialism, as well as republicanism in Egypt. Kwame Nkrumah (1909–1972), who was inspired by the works of Garvey, led Ghana to independence from colonial rule. 
Independence for the colonies in Africa began with the independence of Sudan in 1956, and Ghana in 1957. All of the British colonies on mainland Africa became independent by 1966, although Rhodesia's unilateral declaration of independence in 1965 was not recognised by the UK or internationally. Some of the British colonies in Asia were directly administered by British officials, while others were ruled by local monarchs as protectorates or in subsidiary alliance with the UK. In 1947, British India was partitioned into the independent dominions of India and Pakistan. Hundreds of princely states, states ruled by monarchs in treaty of subsidiary alliance with Britain, were integrated into India and Pakistan. India and Pakistan fought several wars over the former princely state of Jammu and Kashmir. French India was integrated into India between 1950 and 1954, and India annexed Portuguese India in 1961, and the Kingdom of Sikkim in 1975. <laughs> <laughs> Violence, civil warfare and partition Significant violence was involved in several prominent cases of decolonization of the British Empire. Partition was a frequent solution. In 1783, the North American colonies were divided between the independent United States and British North America, which later became Canada. The Indian Rebellion of 1857 was a revolt of a portion of the Indian Army. It was characterized by massacres of civilians on both sides. It was not a movement for independence, however, and only a small part of India was involved. In the aftermath, the British pulled back from modernizing reforms of Indian society, and the level of organized violence under the British Raj was relatively small. Most of that was initiated by repressive British administrators, as in the Amritsar massacre of 1919, or the police assaults on the Salt March of 1930. Large-scale communicable violence broke out after the British left in 1947, turning India over to the new nations of India and Pakistan, the independence movement in Ireland and the 19th and early 20th century was marked by occasional outbursts of violence, culminating in the small-scale Easter Rising of 1916 and the much larger Irish War of Independence of 1919-1921. It was resolved when London gave independence to the Catholic regions of Southern Ireland, and kept control of Protestant Northern Ireland, Cyprus, which came under full British control in 1914 from the Ottoman Empire, was culturally divided between the majority Greek element, which demanded enosis, or union with Greece, and the minority Turks. London for decades assumed it needed the island to defend the Suez Canal, but after the Suez Crisis of 1956, that became a minor factor, and Greek violence became a more serious issue. Cyprus became an independent country in 1960, but ethnic violence escalated until 1974, when Turkey invaded and partitioned the island. Each side rewrote its own history, blaming the other. Palestine became a British mandate from the League of Nations, and during the war the British gained support from both sides by making promises both to the Arabs and the Jews. See Balfour Declaration. Decades of nth no religious violence resulted. The British pulled out, and the mandate was effectively partitioned. Topic. French Empire After World War I, the colonized people were frustrated at France's failure to recognize the effort provided by the French colonies resources, but more importantly colonial troops, the famous tirailleurs. 
Although in Paris the Great Mosque of Paris was constructed as recognition of these efforts, the French state had no intention to allow self-rule, let alone grant independence to the colonized people. Thus, nationalism in the colonies became stronger in between the two wars, leading to ABDL Crim's Rift War (1921–1925) in Morocco and to the creation of Messali Hadjé's Star of North Africa in Algeria in 1925. However, these movements would gain full potential only after World War II. After World War I, France administered the former Ottoman territories of Syria and Lebanon, and the former German colonies of Togoland and Cameroon, as League of Nations mandates. Lebanon declared its independence in 1943, and Syria in 1945. Although France was ultimately a victor of World War II, Nazi Germany's occupation of France and its North African colonies during the war had disrupted colonial rule. On October 27, 1946 France adopted a new constitution creating the Fourth Republic, and substituted the French Union for the colonial empire. However power over the colonies remained concentrated in France, and the power of local assemblies outside France was extremely limited. On the night of March 29, 1947, a nationalist uprising in Madagascar led the French government headed by Paul Ramadier socialist to violent repression, one year of bitter fighting, 11,000 to 40,000 Malagasy died. In 1946, the states of French Indochina withdrew from the French Union, leading to the Indochina War 1946 Ho Chi Minh, who had been a co-founder of the French Communist Party in 1920 and had founded the Viet Minh in 1941, declared independence from France, and led the armed resistance against France's reoccupation of Indochina. Cambodia and Laos became independent in 1953, and the 1954 Geneva Accords ended France's occupation of Indochina, leaving North Vietnam and South Vietnam independent. In 1956, Morocco and Tunisia gained their independence from France. In 1968 independent countries emerged from French West Africa, and five from French Equatorial Africa. The Algerian War of Independence raged from 1954 to 1962. To this day, the Algerian War, officially called a public order operation, until the 1990s, remains a trauma for both France and Algeria. Philosopher Paul Ricoeur has spoken of the necessity of a decolonization of memory, starting with the recognition of the 1961 Paris massacre during the Algerian War, and the decisive role of African and especially North African immigrant manpower in the Trente Glorious's post World War II economic growth period. In the 1960s, due to economic needs for post-war reconstruction and rapid economic growth, French employers actively sought to recruit manpower from the colonies, explaining today's multi-ethnic population. Topic: After 1918 Topic: Western European colonial powers. The new imperialism period of the late 19th and early 20th centuries, which included the scramble for Africa and the Opium Wars, marked the zenith of European colonization. It also accelerated the trends that would end colonialism. The extraordinary material demands of the conflict had spread economic change across the world, notably inflation, and the associated social pressures of war imperialism, created both peasant unrest and a burgeoning middle class. Economic growth created stakeholders with their own demands, while racial issues meant these people clearly stood apart from the colonial middle class and had to form their own group. 
The start of mass nationalism, as a concept and practice, would fatally undermine the ideologies of imperialism. There were, naturally, other factors, from agrarian change and disaster French Indochina, changes or developments in religion, Buddhism in Burma, Islam in the Dutch East Indies, marginally people like John Chilimbwe in Nyasaland, and the impact of the 1930s Great Depression. The Great Depression, despite the concentration of its impact on the industrialized world, was also exceptionally damaging in the rural colonies. Agricultural prices fell much harder and faster than those of industrial goods. From around 1925 until World War II, the colonies suffered. The colonial powers concentrated on domestic issues, protectionism and tariffs, disregarding the damage done to international trade flows. The colonies, almost all primary cash crop producers, lost the majority of their export income and were forced away from the open complementary colonial economies to closed systems. While some areas returned to subsistence farming, British Malaya others diversified India, West Africa, and some began to industrialize. These economies would not fit the colonial straitjacket when efforts were made to renew the links. Further, the European-owned and run plantations proved more vulnerable to extended deflation than native capitalists, reducing the dominance of white farmers in colonial economies and making the European governments and investors of the 1930s co-opt indigenous elites, despite the implications for the future. Colonial reform also hastened their end, notably the move from non-interventionist collaborative systems towards directed, disruptive, direct management to drive economic change. The creation of genuine bureaucratic government boosted the formation of indigenous bourgeoisie. <laughs> United States A former colony itself, the United States approached imperialism differently from the other powers. Much of its energy and rapidly expanding population was directed westward across the North American continent against English and French claims, the Spanish Empire and Mexico. The Native Americans were sent to reservations, often unwillingly. With support from Britain, its Monroe Doctrine reserved the Americas as its sphere of interest, prohibiting other states, particularly Spain, from recolonizing the newly independent polities of Latin America. However, France, taking advantage of the American government's distraction during the Civil War, intervened militarily in Mexico and set up a French protected monarchy. Spain took the step to occupy the Dominican Republic and restore colonial rule. The Union victory in the Civil War in 1865 forced both France and Spain to accede to American demands to evacuate those two countries. America's only African colony, Liberia, was formed privately and achieved independence early. Washington unofficially protected it. By 1900 the U.S. advocated an open-door policy and opposed the direct division of China. After 1898 direct intervention expanded in Latin America. In 1867 the United States purchased Russian America from the Tsar and annexed Hawaii in 1898. It added most of Spain's remaining colonies in 1898–99. Deciding not to annex Cuba outright, the U.S. established it as a client state with obligations including the perpetual lease of Guantanamo Bay to the U.S. Navy. The attempt of the first governor to void the island's constitution and remain in power past the end of his term provoked a rebellion that provoked a reoccupation between 1906 and 1909, but this was again followed by devolution. 
Similarly, the McKinley administration, despite prosecuting the Philippine-American War against a native republic, set out that the territory of the Philippine Islands was eventually granted independence. In 1917, the U.S. purchased the Danish West Indies later renamed the U.S. Virgin Islands from Denmark and Puerto Ricans became full U.S. citizens that same year. The U.S. government declared Puerto Rico the territory was no longer a colony and stopped transmitting information about it to the United Nations Decolonization Committee. As a result, the UN General Assembly removed Puerto Rico from the UN list of non-self-governing territories. Four referenda showed little support for independence, but much interest in statehood such as Hawaii and Alaska received in 1959. The Monroe Doctrine was expanded by the Roosevelt Corollary in 1904, providing that the United States had a right and obligation to intervene in flagrant cases of such wrongdoing or impotence", that a nation in the Western Hemisphere became vulnerable to European control. In practice, this meant that the United States was led to act as a collections agent for European creditors by administering customs duties in the Dominican Republic (1905–1941), Haiti (1915–1934), and elsewhere. The intrusiveness and bad relations this engendered were somewhat checked by the Clark Memorandum and renounced by President Franklin D. Roosevelt's good neighbor policy. After 1947, the U.S. poured tens of billions of dollars into the Marshall Plan, and other grants and loans to Europe and Asia to rebuild the world economy. Washington pushed hard to accelerate decolonization and bring an end to the colonial empires of its Western allies, most importantly during the 1956 Suez Crisis, but American military bases were established around the world and direct and indirect interventions continued in Korea, Indochina, Latin America, inter alia, the 1965 occupation of the Dominican Republic, Africa, and the Middle East to oppose communism. Communist invasions and insurgencies. Since the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the United States has been far less active in the Americas, but invaded Afghanistan and Iraq following the September 11 attacks in 2001, establishing army and air bases in Central Asia. Topic: Japan. Before World War I, Japan had gained several substantial colonial possessions in East Asia such as Taiwan 1895 and Korea 1910. Japan joined the Allies in World War I, and after the war acquired the South Pacific Mandate, the former German colony in Micronesia, as a League of Nations mandate. Pursuing a colonial policy comparable to those of European powers, Japan settled significant populations of ethnic Japanese in its colonies while simultaneously suppressing indigenous ethnic populations by enforcing the learning and use of the Japanese language in schools. Other methods such as public interaction, and attempts to eradicate the use of Korean, Hokkien, and Hakka among the indigenous peoples, were seen to be used. Japan also set up the Imperial Universities in Korea, Keijo Imperial University, and Taiwan, Taihoku Imperial University, to compel education. In 1931, Japan seized Manchuria from the Republic of China, setting up a puppet state under Puyi, the last Manchu emperor of China. In 1933 Japan seized the Chinese province of Jehol, and incorporated it into its Manchurian possessions. The Second Sino-Japanese War started in 1937, and Japan occupied much of eastern China, including the republic's capital at Nanjing. 
An estimated 20 million Chinese died during the 1931 to 1945 war with Japan. In December 1941, the Japanese Empire joined World War II by invading the European and US colonies in Southeast Asia and the Pacific, including French Indochina, Hong Kong, the Philippines, Burma, Malaya, Indonesia, Portuguese Timor, and others. Following its surrender to the Allies in 1945, Japan was deprived of all its colonies. The Soviet Union declared war on Japan in August 1945, and shortly after occupied and annexed the Southern Kuril Islands, which Japan still claims. Topic. Central Europe The Russian, German, and Austro-Hungarian empires collapsed at the end of World War I, and were replaced by republics. Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, and Czechoslovakia became independent countries. Yugoslavia and Romania expanded into former Austro-Hungarian territory. The Soviet Union succeeded the Russian Empire in the remainder if its former territory, and Germany, Austria, and Hungary were reduced in size. In 1938, Nazi Germany annexed Austria and part of Czechoslovakia, and in 1939, Nazi Germany and the USSR concluded a pact to occupy the countries that lie between them. The USSR occupied Finland, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, and Germany and the USSR split Poland in two. The occupation of Poland started World War II. Germany attacked the USSR in 1941. The USSR allied with the UK and USA, and emerged as one of the victors of the war, occupying most of Central and Eastern Europe. Topic. After 1945, Topic. Planning for decolonization Topic. U.S. and Philippines In the United States, the two major parties were divided on the acquisition of the Philippines, which became a major campaign issue in 1900. The Republicans, who favored permanent acquisition, won the election, but after a decade or so, Republicans turned their attention to the Caribbean, focusing on building the Panama Canal. President Woodrow Wilson, a Democrat in office from 1913 to 1921, ignored the Philippines, and focused his attention on Mexico and Caribbean nations. By the 1920s, the peaceful efforts by the Filipino leadership to pursue independence proved convincing. When the Democrats returned to power in 1933, they worked with Filipino to plan a smooth transition to independence. It was scheduled for 1946 by Tidings McDuffie Act of 1934. In 1935, the Philippines transitioned out of territorial status, controlled by an appointed governor, to the semi-independent status of the Commonwealth of the Philippines. Its constitutional convention wrote a new constitution, which was approved by Washington and went into effect, with an elected governor Manuel L. Cazon and legislature. Foreign affairs remained under American control. The Philippines built up a new army, under General Douglas MacArthur, who took leave from his U.S. Army position to take command of the new army reporting to Kazan. The Japanese occupation 1942-1945 disrupted but did not delay the transition. It took place on schedule in 1946 as Manuel Roxas took office as president. Topic. Portugal Although a small, poor country, Portugal had one of the oldest and largest of the empires. 
the British had long protected it, and by 1945 it regained possessions it had lost to the Japanese. Portugal was an authoritarian state, with no taste for democracy at home or in its colonies. There was a fierce determination to maintain possession at all costs, and aggressively defeat any insurgencies. However, Portugal was helpless when India seized Goa in 1961. In 1961, nationalist forces began organizing in Portugal, and the revolt spread to Mozambique and Guinea-Bissau. Lisbon escalated its repressive measures, and setting up strategic hamlets. Deeply distrustful of the natives, Portugal sent another 300,000 European settlers into Angola by 1974. In 1974, left-wing revolution inside Portugal destroyed the old system and encouraged pro-Soviet elements to attempt to seize control in the colonies. The result was a very long and extremely difficult multi-party civil war in Angola, and lesser insurrections in Mozambique. Topic. Belgium Belgium is a small, rich European country that had an empire forced upon it by international demand in 1908 in response to the malfeasance of its King Leopold in greatly mistreating the Congo. It added Rwanda and Burundi as League of Nations mandates from the former German Empire in 1919. The colonies remained independent during the war, while Belgium itself was cruelly occupied by the Germans. There was no serious planning for independence, and exceedingly little training or education provided. The Belgian Congo was especially rich, and many Belgian businessmen lobbied hard to maintain control. Local revolts grew in power and finally, the Belgian king suddenly announced in 1959 that independence was on the agenda, and it was hurriedly arranged in 1960, for country bitterly and deeply divided on social and economic grounds. The Netherlands the Netherlands, a small rich country in Western Europe, had spent centuries building up its empire. By 1940 it consisted mostly of the Dutch East Indies now Indonesia. Its massive oil reserves provided about 14% of the Dutch national product and supported a large population of ethnic Dutch government officials and businessmen in Jakarta and other major cities. The Netherlands was overrun and almost starved to death by the Nazis during the war, and Japan sank the Dutch fleet in seizing the East Indies. In 1945 the Netherlands could not regain these islands on its own, it did so by depending on British military help and American financial grants. By the time Dutch soldiers returned, an independent government under Sukarno, originally set up by the Japanese, was in power. The Dutch in the East Indies, and at home, were practically unanimous except for the communists that Dutch power and prestige and wealth depended on an extremely expensive war to regain the islands. Compromises were negotiated, were trusted by neither side. When the Indonesian Republic successfully suppressed a large-scale communist revolt, the United States realized that it needed the nationalist government as an ally in the Cold War. Dutch possession was an obstacle to American Cold War goals, so Washington forced the Dutch to grant full independence. A few years later, Sukarno seized all Dutch properties and expelled all ethnic Dutch—over 300,000 as well as several hundred thousand ethnic Indonesians who supported the Dutch cause. In the aftermath, the Netherlands prospered greatly in the 1950s and 1960s but nevertheless public opinion was bitterly hostile to the United States for betrayal. Washington remained baffled why the Dutch were so inexplicably enamoured of an obviously hopeless cause. Topic. 
United Nations Trust Territories When the United Nations was formed in 1945, it established trust territories. These territories included the League of Nations Mandate Territories which had not achieved independence by 1945, along with the former Italian Somaliland. The trust territory of the Pacific Islands was transferred from Japanese to U.S. administration. By 1990 all but one of the trust territories had achieved independence, either as independent states or by merger with another independent state, the Northern Mariana Islands elected to become a Commonwealth of the United States. The emergence of the Third World 1945 -present. The term, Third World, was coined by French demographer Alfred Sauvy in 1952, on the model of the Third Estate, which, according to Abbe Siais, represented everything, but was nothing. Because at the end this ignored, exploited, scorned Third World like the Third Estate, wants to become something too. Sauvy. The emergence of this new political entity, in the frame of the Cold War, was complex and painful. Several tentative were made to organize newly independent states in order to oppose a common front towards both the U.S.'s and the USSR's influence on them, with the consequences of the Sino-Soviet split already at works. Thus, the non-aligned movement constituted itself, around the main figures of Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India, Sukarno, the Indonesian President, Josip Broz Tito the Communist leader of Yugoslavia, and Gamal Abdel Nasser, head of Egypt who successfully opposed the French and British imperial powers during the 1956 Suez Crisis. After the 1954 Geneva Conference which put an end to the First Indochina War, the 1955 Bandung Conference gathered Nasser, Nehru, Tito, Sukarno, the leader of Indonesia, and Zhou Enlai, Premier of the People's Republic of China. In 1960, the UN General Assembly voted the Declaration on the Granting of Independence to Colonial Countries and Peoples. The next year, the non-aligned movement was officially created in Belgrade 1961, and was followed in 1964 by the creation of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development UNCTAD, which tried to promote a new international economic order NIEO. The NIEO was opposed to the 1944 Bretton Woods system, which had benefited the leading states which had created it, and remained in force until 1971 after the United States' suspension of convertibility from dollars to gold. The main tenets of the NIEO were Developing countries must be entitled to regulate and control the activities of multinational corporations operating within their territory. They must be free to nationalize or expropriate foreign property on conditions favorable to them. They must be free to set up associations of primary commodities producers similar to the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, created on September 17, 1960 to protest pressure by major oil companies mostly owned by U.S., British, and Dutch nationals to reduce oil prices and payments to producers. All other states must recognize this right and refrain from taking economic, military, or political measures measures calculated to restrict it. International trade should be based on the need to ensure stable, equitable, and remunerative prices for raw materials, generalized non-reciprocal and non-discriminatory tariff preferences, as well as transfer of technology to developing countries, and should provide economic and technical assistance without any strings attached. 
The UNCTAD however wasn't very effective in implementing this new International Economic Order and social and economic inequalities between industrialized countries and the Third World kept on growing throughout the 1960s until the 21st century. The 1973 oil crisis which followed the Yom Kippur War October 1973 was triggered by the OPEC which decided an embargo against the U.S. and Western countries, causing a fourfold increase in the price of oil, which lasted five months, starting on October 17, 1973, and ending on March 18, 1974. OPEC nations then agreed, on January 7, 1975, to raise crude oil prices by 10%. At that time, OPEC nations, including many who had recently nationalized their oil industries, joined the call for a new international economic order to be initiated by coalitions of primary producers. Concluding the first OPEC summit in Algiers they called for stable and just commodity prices, an international food and agriculture program, technology transfer from north to south, and the democratization of the economic system. But industrialized countries quickly began to look for substitutes to OPEC petroleum, with the oil companies investing the majority of their research capital in the U.S. and European countries or others, politically sure countries. The OPEC lost more and more influence on the world prices of oil. The second oil crisis occurred in the wake of the 1979 Iranian Revolution. Then, the 1982 Latin American debt crisis exploded in Mexico first, then Argentina and Brazil, which proved unable to pay back their debts, jeopardizing the existence of the international economic system. The 1990s were characterized by the prevalence of the Washington Consensus on neoliberal policies, structural adjustment, and shock therapies for the former communist states. <decolonization>, decolonization of Africa The decolonization of North Africa, and sub-Saharan Africa took place in the mid to late 1950s, very suddenly, with little preparation. There was widespread unrest and organized revolts, especially in French Algeria, Portuguese Angola, the Belgian Congo, and British Kenya. In 1945, Africa had four independent countries Egypt, Ethiopia, Liberia, and South Africa. After Italy's defeat in World War II, France and the UK occupied the former Italian colonies. Libya became an independent kingdom in 1951. Eritrea was merged with Ethiopia in 1952. Italian Somaliland was governed by the UK, and by Italy after 1954, until its independence in 1960. By 1977 European colonial rule in mainland Africa had ended. Most of Africa's island countries had also become independent, although Réunion and Mayotte remained part of France. However the black majorities in Rhodesia and South Africa were disenfranchised until 1979 in Rhodesia, which became Zimbabwe Rhodesia that year and Zimbabwe the next, and until 1994 in South Africa. Namibia, Africa's last UN Trust territory, became independent of South Africa in 1990. Most independent African countries exist within prior colonial borders. However Morocco merged French Morocco with Spanish Morocco, and Somalia formed from the merger of British Somaliland and Italian Somaliland. Eritrea merged with Ethiopia in 1952, but became an independent country in 1993. Most African countries became independent as republics. Morocco, Lesotho, and Swaziland remain monarchies under dynasties that predate colonial rule. Egypt and Libya gained independence as monarchies, but both countries' monarchs were later deposed, and they became republics. 
African countries cooperate in various multi-state associations. The African Union includes all 55 African states. There are several regional associations of states, including the East African Community, Southern African Development Community, and Economic Community of West African States, some of which have overlapping membership. United Kingdom, Sudan 1956, Ghana 1957, Nigeria 1960, Sierra Leone and Tanganyika 1961, Uganda 1962, Kenya and Sultanate of Zanzibar 1963, Malawi and Zambia 1964, Gambia and Rhodesia 1965, Botswana and Lesotho 1966, Mauritius and Swaziland Zealand, 1968 France, Morocco and Tunisia 1956, Guinea 1958, Cameroon, Togo, Mali, Senegal, Madagascar, Benin, Niger, Burkina Faso, Ivory Coast, Chad, Central African Republic, Republic of the Congo, Gabon and Mauritania 1960, Algeria 1962, Comoros 1975, Djibouti 1977. Spain, Equatorial Guinea, 1968. Portugal, Guinea-Bissau, 1974. Mozambique, Cape Verde, São Tomé and Príncipe and Angola, 1975. Belgium, Democratic Republic of the Congo, 1960. Burundi and Rwanda, 1962. Topic. Decolonization in the Americas after 1945 United Kingdom, Newfoundland formerly an independent dominion but under direct British rule since 1934 1949, Union with Canada, Jamaica 1962, Trinidad and Tobago 1962, Barbados 1962, Guyana 1966, Bahamas 1973, Grenada 1974, Dominica 1978, St. Lucia 1979, St. Vincent and the Grenadines 1979, Antigua and Barbuda 1981, Belize 1981, St. Kitts and Nevis 1983. Netherlands, Netherlands Antilles, Suriname 1954, both becoming constituent countries of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, 1975 independence of Suriname Denmark, Greenland 1979, became a constituent country of the Kingdom of Denmark. Decolonization of Asia Japan expanded its occupation of Chinese territory during the 1930s, and occupied Southeast Asia during World War II. After the war, the Japanese colonial empire was dissolved, and national independence movements resisted the re-imposition of colonial control by European countries and the United States. The Republic of China regained control of Japanese-occupied territories in Manchuria and eastern China, as well as Taiwan. Only Hong Kong and Macau remained in outside control. The Allied powers divided Korea into two occupation zones, which became the states of North Korea and South Korea. The Philippines became independent of the U.S. in 1946. The Netherlands recognized Indonesia's independence in 1949, after a four-year independence struggle. Indonesia annexed Netherlands New Guinea in 1963, and Portuguese Timor in 1975. In 2002, former Portuguese Timor became independent as East Timor. The following list shows the colonial powers following the end of hostilities in 1945, and their colonial or administrative possessions. The year of decolonization is given chronologically in parentheses. 
United Kingdom, Transjordan 1946, British India and Pakistan 1947, British Mandate of Palestine, Burma, Ceylon 1948, British Malaya 1957, Kuwait 1961, Kingdom of Sarawak, North Borneo and Singapore 1963, Maldives 1965, United Arab Emirates 1971, Brunei 1984, Hong Kong 1997, France, French India 1954, and Indochina comprising Vietnam 1945, Cambodia 1953, and Laos 1953. Portugal, Portuguese India 1961, East Timor 1975, Macau 1999. United States, Philippines 1946. Netherlands, Indonesia 1949. Topic: Decolonization in Europe. Italy had occupied the Dodecanese Islands in 1912, but Italian occupation ended after World War II, and the islands were integrated into Greece. British rule ended in Cyprus in 1960, and Malta in 1964, and both islands became independent republics. Soviet control of its non-Russian member republics weakened rapidly as movements for democratization and self-government gained strength during 1990 and 1991. The Soviet coup d'état attempt in August 1991 began the breakup of the USSR, which formally ended on December 26, 1991. The republics of the Soviet Union become sovereign states. Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarusia, later Belarus, Estonia, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Latvia, Lithuania, Moldova, Russia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Ukraine and Uzbekistan. Historian Robert Daniels says, "...a special dimension that the anti-communist revolutions shared with some of their predecessors was decolonization." Moscow's policy had long been to settle ethnic Russians in the non-Russian republics. After independence, minority rights for Russian speakers has been an issue, see Russians in the Baltic states. <laughs> Decolonization of Oceania The decolonization of Oceania occurred after World War II when nations in Oceania achieved independence by transitioning from European colonial rule to full independence. United Kingdom, Tonga and Fiji 1970, Solomon Islands and Tuvalu 1978, Kiribati 1979, United Kingdom and France, Vanuatu, 1980; Australia, Nauru, 1968; Papua New Guinea, 1975; New Zealand, Samoa, 1962; United States, Marshall Islands and Federated States of Micronesia, 1986; Palau, 1994. Topic Challenges Typical challenges of decolonization include state building, nation building, and economic development. Topic State building After independence, the new states needed to establish or strengthen the institutions of a sovereign state, governments, laws, a military, schools, administrative systems, and so on. 
the amount of self-rule granted prior to independence, and assistance from the colonial power and or international organizations after independence, varied greatly between colonial powers, and between individual colonies, except for a few absolute monarchies, most post-colonial states are either republics or constitutional monarchies. These new states had to devise constitutions, electoral systems, and other institutions of representative democracy. <laughs> Nation building Nation building is the process of creating a sense of identification with, and loyalty to, the state. Nation building projects seek to replace loyalty to the old colonial power, and or tribal or regional loyalties, with loyalty to the new state. Elements of nation building include creating and promoting symbols of the state like a flag and an anthem, monuments, official histories, national sports teams, codifying one or more indigenous official languages, and replacing colonial place names with local ones. Nation building after independence often continues the work began by independence movements during the colonial period. <inaudible> <inaudible> Settled populations Decolonization is not an easy matter in colonies where a large population of settlers lives, particularly if they have been there for several generations. This population, in general, was often repatriated, often losing considerable property. For instance, the decolonization of Algeria by France was particularly uneasy due to the large European population see also Pied Noir, which largely evacuated to France when Algeria became independent. In Zimbabwe, former Rhodesia, President Robert Mugabe has, starting in the 1990s, targeted white African farmers and forcibly seized their property. Other ethnic minorities that are also the product of colonialism may pose problems as well. A large Indian community lived in Uganda, as in most of East Africa, as a result of Britain colonizing both India and East Africa. As many Indians had considerable wealth Idi Amin expelled them for domestic political gain. Topic. Economic development Newly independent states also had to develop independent economic institutions, a national currency, banks, companies, regulation, tax systems, etc. Many colonies were serving as resource colonies which produced raw materials and agricultural products, and as a captive market for goods manufactured in the colonizing country. Many decolonized countries created programs to promote industrialization. Some nationalized industries and infrastructure, and some engaged in land reform to redistribute land to individual farmers or create collective farms. Some decolonized countries maintain strong economic ties with the former colonial power. The CFA franc is a currency shared by 14 countries in West and Central Africa, mostly former French colonies. The CFA franc is guaranteed by the French Treasury. After independence, many countries created regional economic associations to promote trade and economic development among neighboring countries, including the Association of Southeast Asian Nations ASEAN, the Economic Community of West African States ECOAS, and the Gulf Cooperation Council. Topic. Effects on the colonizers John Kenneth Galbraith argues that the post-World War II decolonization was brought about for economic reasons. In A Journey Through Economic Time, he writes, 
The engine of economic well-being was now within and between the advanced industrial countries. Domestic economic growth, as now measured and much discussed, came to be seen as far more important than the erstwhile colonial trade. The economic effect in the United States from the granting of independence to the Philippines was unnoticeable, partly due to the Bell Trade Act, which allowed American monopoly in the economy of the Philippines. The departure of India and Pakistan made small economic difference in the United Kingdom. Dutch economists calculated that the economic effect from the loss of the Great Dutch Empire in Indonesia was compensated for by a couple of years or so of domestic post-war economic growth. The end of the colonial era is celebrated in the history books as a triumph of national aspiration in the former colonies and of benign good sense on the part of the colonial powers. Lurking beneath, as so often happens, was a strong current of economic interest, or in this case, disinterest. In general, the release of the colonized caused little economic loss to the colonizers. Part of the reason for this was that major costs were eliminated while major benefits were obtained by alternate means. Decolonization allowed the colonizer to disclaim responsibility for the colonized. The colonizer no longer had the burden of obligation, financial or otherwise, to their colony. However, the colonizer continued to be able to obtain cheap goods and labor as well as economic benefits see Suez Canal crisis from the former colonies. Financial, political and military pressure could still be used to achieve goals desired by the colonizer. Thus decolonization allowed the goals of colonization to be largely achieved, but without its burdens. Effects on the former colonies <laughs> Post-colonial organizations Due to a common history and culture, former colonial powers created institutions which more loosely associated the former colonies. Membership is voluntary, and in some cases can be revoked if a member state loses some objective criteria usually a requirement for democratic governance. The organizations serve cultural, economic, and political purposes between the associated countries, although no such organization has become politically prominent as an entity in its own right. Topic. Assassinated anti-colonialist leaders A non-exhaustive list of assassinated leaders would include Tiradentes was a leading member of the Brazilian seditious movement known as the Inconfidencia Mineira, against the Portuguese Empire. He fought for an independent Brazilian republic. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, non-violent leader of the Indian independence movement was assassinated in 1948 by Nuturam Godsa. Ruben Um Nyobe, leader of the Union of the Peoples of Cameroon UPC, killed by the French SDECE on September 13, 1958. No clear cause has ever been ascertained for the mysterious crash. Assassination has been alleged. Barthélemy Boganda, leader of a nationalist Central African Republic movement, who died in a plane crash on March 29, 1959, eight days before the last elections of the colonial era. Félix Roland Momier, successor to Ruben Um Nyobe at the head of the Cameroon's People Union, assassinated in Geneva in 1960 by the SDECE French Secret Services. Patrice Lumumba, the first Prime Minister of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, was assassinated on January 17, 1961. 
Burundi nationalist Louis R. Wagasaw was assassinated on October 13, 1961, while Pierre Ngendendemwe, Burundi's first Hutu prime minister, was also murdered on January 15, 1965. Silvanus Olympio, the first president of Togo, was assassinated on January 13, 1963. Mehdi Ben Barker, the leader of the Moroccan National Union of Popular Forces UNPF, and of the Tricontinental Conference, which was supposed to prepare in 1966 in Havana its first meeting gathering national liberation movements from all continents, related to the non-aligned movement, but the Tricontinental Conference gathered liberation movements while the non-aligned were for the most part states, was disappeared in Paris in 1965, allegedly by Moroccan agents and French police officers. Nigerian leader Amadou Bello was assassinated in January 1966 during a coup which toppled Nigeria's post-independence government. Eduardo Mondlane, the leader of FRELIMO and the father of Mozambican independence, was assassinated in 1969. Both the Portuguese intelligence or the Portuguese secret police PDE, DGS and elements of FRELIMO, have been accused of killing Mondlane. Mohamed Bassari, Sahrawi leader of the movement for the liberation of Sagir El Hamra and Wadi El Dahab was disappeared in El Ayoun in 1970, allegedly by the Spanish Legion. Amilcar Cabral was killed on January 20, 1973 by PAIGC rival Inocencio Carni, with the help of Portuguese agents operating within the PAIGC. <laughs> Topic. Timeline of independence This list includes formerly non-self-governing territories, such as colonies, protectorates, condominia, and leased territories. Changes in status of autonomy leading up to and after independence are not listed, and some dates of independence may be disputed. For details, see each national history. Topic. 18th century to World War I <inaudible> Interwar period <inaudible> Cold War Post-Cold War era Topic. See also Creole nationalism Current United Nations list of non-self-governing territories Neocolonialism Imperialism Partition politics, Separatism Secession Organisation internationale de la francophonie Commonwealth of Nations Organisation of Ibero-American States Commonwealth of Independent States Freely Associated States De Nederlands Taluni Repatriation, cultural heritage, repatriation and reburial of human remains.